Hi everyone, this is Steve Krause, and if you're watching this video, there's a pretty good chance that you have found the website for English 444 Rifle Roller Web for Spring 2013. There's a lot of information here to read and, and uh, an invitation for you to post um, an introduction to yourself. I just wanted to offer this brief video um, from my backyard um, to talk about a few things in the syllabus in particular, a little bit about the schedule, and uh, then we'll jump right in. So I'm on my computer here and I'm looking at the syllabus. <clears throat> so I just want to hit a couple of highlights of some important things. Um, all the contact information for how to get a hold of me is at the, on the right at the very beginning there. I don't have regular office hours scheduled this spring um, because I'm just teaching this class and it's just online. So if you want to meet, we need to in person. We'll need to schedule an appointment, um, and we can meet online uh, through something like Google Hangouts. And of course, I answer my email, and we'll be meeting electronically here too. Um, a little bit about the course, what you've gotten yourself into. Um, the, basically, it's writing for the World Wide Web in two senses. One is, is we'll be doing a lot of things that involve making websites for the web, making making websites. So working with HTML and CSS and server issues, a lot of technical kind of stuff. Uh, along those lines, we'll also be talking about things like usability, good web design, uh, good web writing, um, how the text works, etc. But we'll also be talking about the web as sort of a social and cultural um, construct, concept, and how it's shaped the way that we think about writing in the broadest sense. And that means we'll be talking about social media, we'll be talking about trends in journalism, we'll be talking about trends in quote unquote web 2.0 culture, things like Twitter, etc. So uh, that's the basic sort of gist of the course. <coughs> the the text, the, there's three books that you need to get. Um, I link to them on the syllabus. They're widely available at other places. Um, be sure to get uh, the second edition of the of the uh, Redder, uh, the Reddish book because I think that that will be useful and interesting. And there was a conversation before the class this semester about electronic versions versus print versions. And if you wanted to get a print version of, or I'm sorry, an electronic version of any of these books, I would say the Shirky book because that's just mostly a um, just words. I have found that when you get Kindle versions of books that are things that have a lot of images and graphics and stuff like that, it doesn't work as well. So I would encourage you to get the print versions of those two books. And there'll be a bunch of other readings that are just online through e-reserves or just through the web. Now in this syllabus I have a lot of various kinds of warnings and preambles that you really need to read kind of carefully. I'm just going to touch on a couple of them, a couple of these issues really quick. If you don't have a pretty robust computer, um, this course could be kind of a challenge. Um, if you don't have a computer at all, this course would be really, really hard to do since after all it's an online course, it involves a lot of technology, etc. Anyways, the class, the, the class is called Writing for the World Wide Web, which means that there is a technological component to the, to the work that we'll be doing that's quite a bit more complicated than just Microsoft Word or sending emails or something like that. We will be making web pages with basic code and we will be uploading and downloading things to servers and you'll have to install some software and you'll, all kinds of stuff like that. It's not hard and um, everybody can do it even if you don't have any experience with it. But I will say this, if you don't have any experience doing this stuff um, or you're kind of, you know, not really good with computers as they say, this course is going to be a lot harder than it would be otherwise and you need to recognize that yourself in order to figure out ways to, you know, overcome these um, fears and challenges and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> the other big challenge of the course is that it is uh, online and it's seven and a half weeks. Okay. Now the online format's great. It allows for things like this. I mean, I'm in here. I am today in my backyard. It's I'm and just in terms of time, I'm recording this the weekend before the class actually starts. So we have this uh, great thing with online courses where we can be anywhere. You know. And we can also kind of be out of time because we're not all meeting at the same place at the same time. Um, the challenge of online courses, and I've been teaching online now for almost 10 years, is you have to be able to discipline yourself as a student to make sure that you're attending and attending to the course outside of this sort of freeform schedule. Um, you know, it's a little bit like going joining a gym. You know, everybody joins a gym or athletic facility or something like that with the best of intentions. You know, 
I'm going to go every day before work or ever after after work or something like that. Um, but the way the gyms make their money is because all the people who sign up for it who don't actually use the facility. And it's a little bit like that. If, if you just kind of ignore the online class, you know, then you're not really doing yourself any favor. And as we'll see uh, a little bit later on when we talk about virtual attendance, uh, you'll fail. <clears throat> the other thing is, is that the class is in an accelerated format. Now there's advantages to that too. I mean, seven and a half weeks is shorter than 15 weeks, which is great, which means we'll all be done with this uh, a lot sooner than we would be otherwise. But I wanna point out, I said it's a, an accelerated format, which means it's not half as much stuff you know, that you would do in a 15 week class. And rather, it's the same amount of stuff done twice as fast. So what that means, you'll see this when you look at the schedule, is that almost every three days is like a week in this class. So Monday through Wednesday is one week and Wednesday through uh, Friday is another week. So you wanna keep that in mind in terms of uh, how you schedule this. Um, I think that the best rule of thumb for participating in online courses is you should imagine spending about as much time engaging with the online course as you would if you were if we were meeting face to face so in a normal 15 week online course i tell students you should plan on spending at least three hours a week online and engaged with the course because that's about how much time we would spend each week meeting face to face in this course because it is a seven and a half week format you should plan on spending about six hours a week online and engaged in the course. I know it seems like a lot, but there's a lot of stuff that we have to do in a fairly short period of time. Now, under uh, stuff you need to do, the first thing I talk about is uh, online attendance. And online attendance, is, attendance for the course is sort of a yes or no issue. You're either attending or you're not. And the rule for this basically is, is that you need to do something to demonstrate presence in the course uh, between Monday and Wednesday, between Wednesday and Friday. This is not a self-study course, this is not a self-paced course. Uh, learning in general is a social activity and writing in particular is a social activity. So this is not the kind of thing that you can just do all at the end of the semester or on Saturdays or Friday nights or whatever. So you're gonna have to do participate between Monday and Wednesday and Wednesday and Friday. And if you don't, as I explained there, there's attendance rules for this. Um, if you're absent, too much from participating in the online course, you will end up not passing because of um, failing um, for failing attendance, essentially. Now, the course overall is worth 1,250 points for undergraduates and 1,500 points for graduate students. <coughs> Participation's worth 250 points, and I explained some of the rules for participation as we go. The biggest thing that you gotta remember is that we're trying to replicate some of the stuff that we might do in a face-to-face -face class, and that means diligently participating in the comment forms for the class as the semester goes along. Um, and the comment forms are you know, on this website right here that you're looking at. Um, and you comment underneath my video here. Um, and then the other thing is, is we'll be working experiment a little bit with Twitter. Um, there's a hashtag for the course this semester. Um, it should be showing up on the screen about now. Um, and what we'll use this hashtag for is a way to ask each other questions about making web pages, about um, posting our success at Code Academy. Um, and some of you might use it as a social media that you follow this semester <clears throat> and other things that might come up. Like if you come across a link that you wanna share with the class, that's a quick and easy way to do it. Um, I'm also asking everyone to sign up for LinkedIn. The main reason I want you to sign up for LinkedIn is so that you can join the group that's on LinkedIn for the written communications. Um, it's a way to circulate things like, um, you know, job opportunities that come up or, or uh, internship things that come up that I hear about and to just sort of connect with the uh, community of alumni, to network the community of alumni that for the program. Some of you might also want to use that as the social networking activity for the semester. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, most of the course is made up of the writing projects for the semester, and I describe them briefly in the syllabus. Um, there's three of them, the HTML, CSS, Zen flower part exercises, which begin with some Code Academy exercises to learn HTML and CSS, and also include a, an exercise working with different CSS style sheets, the semester of social media project, and the usability slash text to hypertext uh, project. There's a lot more detail about th these three assignments on the course website, and so we'll be talking about them uh, quite a bit. If you're a graduate student, there's another project that you need to do, which is essentially an interview of uh, someone having to do with content in the course, having to do with uh, writing for the World Web or social media 
or something like that. Again, read that uh, on the course, um, the course materials and you'll, you'll see what I mean. One of the things that's kind of interesting about this class, to me at least, that's different from most classes I teach, is that it, unlike most classes I teach are fairly linear, that is, you have one assignment that builds to another assignment that builds to another assignment and so forth uh, in order. This class is actually a web. See, get it, World Wide Web? Because I'm giving you all the major assignments for the course right up front, and really, you should be engaging in all the course major assignments for the course all semester long. And hopefully that will make sense uh, as we start getting started. There are certain things you have to do in order. I mean, you have to learn HTML and CSS before you can make your own website and before you can do the CSS um, project. But you'll be doing the social media project all semester and so forth. Uh, there's also a portfolio space it's on, uh, that you'll be setting up a WordPress.com uh, portfolio for all the English 444 stuff. Again, I explained that a little bit. It's, um, WordPress is a really simple, easy to use content management system so that most people use for a blog. And you could use it as a blog for the social media assignment, but for our purposes, what I'm asking you to do is create a easy to use portfolio website space to which you'll uh, use as kind of a home spot for your work that you'll link to other work in the class. A couple other things before I finish. One is, is that uh, in order to pass the course, you have to finish all the major writing assignments, regardless of what grade you get and re receive and anything else. So make sure you get all the work done. Um, there's some information here in terms of the grading scale. I have some information here about privacy online because I think it's important for a course called Writing for the World Wide Web that you're actually making writing that uh, gets published on the web and you're participating in the environment that is the World Wide Web through social media, through our website, etc. Um, so as a result of that, the course is not behind a course shell. It's right here on a website that you know anybody in the world can go see. And in fact, other people might be stopping by the class as the semester goes along. Uh, maybe some of the writers that we're reading, um, just people randomly. You'd be surprised. Um, so I'm, you know, I've never had a problem with this, and I think that most of you are probably leading, you know, doing something publicly online as it is. But I want you to be aware of that. And so I explained some of the sort of issues of privacy that you might want to keep in mind as the semester goes along. You know, about how you, what, what sort of information you make available via this website, via the works of websites that you make for the, uh, the assignments and so forth. Okay, let me just spend a moment um, talking briefly about the schedule, <clears throat> if you look at this, if you look at the top of the website, you'll see one of the tabs is called Schedule Spring 2013. And I want to mention two things for now. One is is that inevitably the schedule will change and evolve. I think this is pretty much what we're going to be doing, but you know things could rearrange themselves in, in ways that are unexpected. I just don't know yet. Uh, the second thing is just give you an idea of how the schedule works. Um, it, you, you'll notice for most weeks it says begin by Monday and then begin by Wednesday. So for this first week it says begin by Monday, watch introductory video, review course materials, sign up for the account for the website, ask questions about the website, sign up videos, etc. And you'll see all that kind of stuff there. This first part between now and Wednesday is the getting started part. And then it says begin by Wednesday, read and discuss 20 things I learned about browsers and the web. And to do that, you need to go click on that link and read that document. Um, it's not that long. It's maybe 40 pages total, or probably less than that. Um, and it's all on the web. And you need to read that and post about that sometime beginning on Wednesday. I will set up a place on the website that will allow you to post a comment in terms of the discussion about that text. Um, it, we have to begin by Monday and begin by Wednesday so then the conversation can happen, right? Because if everybody waited until, you know, you know, it says begin on Monday and goes to Wednesday, if everybody waited until Wednesday, then we really wouldn't be, have a chance to have a conversation about it because we'd run out of time. And same sort of thing if everybody waits until Friday to talk about 20 things I learned about browsers and the web. So be, you want to be diligent about thinking of deadlines between Monday and Wednesday. Any time on Monday and Wednesday, by the way. I mean, Monday, those days are 24 hours long as far as I'm concerned. So if you are someone who wants to post to the website at 7 o'clock in the morning, that's great. If you want to post to the website at 11 o'clock at night, that's fine too. Just make sure to keep it, uh, keep track of the schedule and try to keep up the schedule as best you can. Um, okay, I think that's it for now. You'll certainly be seeing other videos from me this semester. 
Um, we'll be having lots of opportunities to do some uh, things like Google Hangouts. We might have some face-to-face -face meeting chances. Uh, I'm looking forward to jumping in uh, with uh, both feet, and hopefully you are too. Okay, I'll see you online.